This is Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Bill Butel, Scott Clark with Sports, Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening. It was almost a year and a half ago on Long Island. Amy Fisher shot Mary Jo Budafuco in the face. Amy said she did it for the love of Joey Budafuco. Amy Fisher went to prison. Joey Budafuco stonewalled and denied. Till today. Today he admits he is guilty of statutory rape. He admits he had sex with Amy Fisher when she was underage, only 16. The story, the penalty, from N.J. Burkett, live in Mineola. N.J.? A stunning end, Bill, to what has been a sensational story. And Joey Budafuco, for the first time in more than a year, actually seemed worried. The plea bargain could mean up to six months in jail. So why did you lie for so long? It had to have been one of the most agonizing, if not one of the most humiliating moments in Joey Budafuco's life. Plea of guilty is the same as a conviction after trial. Do you understand? Yes, sir. He stood before the judge more tense than stoic, more nervous this time than angry. In his own words, he admitted what he's denied from the very beginning. On July 2nd, 1991, I had sexual relations with Amy Fisher at the Freeport Motel. Motel. In accepting the plea bargain, Butterfugo admitted to having just one underage encounter with Amy Fisher, although prosecutors insist there were many more taking place at four area motels, aboard Butafuco's speedboat, and at his family's body shop. In the end, prosecutors say it was Butafuco's own arrogance and his own employees that convinced them to reopen the case. The turning point was the uh, former employees who had come forward and had given us other information, which we were able to check out, all of which pointed to the defendant's guilt. And but if you go left the courthouse amid a crush of reporters and photographers and said nothing. Later, his attorney would say only that Butafuco did what he had to do for the sake of his family. In this interview conducted with Mrs. Butafuco in May, she insisted that the affair with her husband was a figment of Amy Fisher's imagination. I am more convinced than ever that uh, she fantasized this whole thing in her head. And if you think about it, it almost makes sense out of all the people she had, and she had a lot, why me? And I think it's because the one person she wanted, she then couldn't get, could not get, was Joe. And Mrs. Buttafuoco was conspicuous in her absence today. She is described by her friends tonight as distraught, inconsolable, at times even hysterical. The sentencing of her husband is set for November. We spoke uh, just a short time ago with members of the Fisher legal team, and they tell us that Amy Fisher learned of the plea bargain early this afternoon. She views this, in the words of her lawyers, as an absolute vindication. Live tonight at the Nassau County Courthouse in Mineola, Long Island, N.J. Burke at Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, N.J. A doctor from New Jersey could soon be in a court of law to answer to charges of sexually abusing two girls. Dr. Mark Roberts was arrested today, the third person arrested in a child sex abuse scandal in Belleville. Police say Roberts was one of several people who abused the girls over a period of two years. The bombing of the World Trade Center was relived today in court by eyewitnesses who lived through it. In the second day of testimony, eight people told about the bombing that shook the tower on February 26 this year. A firefighter said finding an elevator filled with people who collapsed from smoke was very much like opening up a tomb. Four Muslim fundamentalists are standing trial for what is said to have been their roles in the explosion. The case of the young man, the teenager, accused of killing another teenager after the victim recited the Hail Mary prayer, is in the hands of the jury tonight. The jury deliberated for a few hours this afternoon before retiring for the night just a short time ago. 19-year-old James Wanger is accused of strangling Robert Solomini a year and a half ago. The horrors of battle in Somalia are driven home tonight with pictures of a captured American helicopter pilot wounded and frightened and Somalis dancing with joy as they drag the body of a serviceman through the streets. These pictures have increased pressure on President Clinton to pull our troops out of Somalia. That is a decision that involves the United Nations as well as this country. And our senior correspondent, John Johnson, is at the U.N. John?
While well, Belgium, the United Nations is increasing its urgent efforts to win the freedom of an American U.S. helicopter pilot captured by Somali militiamen, as the United States rushes more troops to the Horn of Africa. They were still celebrating on the streets of Mogadishu today, crowds displaying horrifying souvenirs of 12 American servicemen killed over the weekend in fierce fighting with militiamen of warlord Muhammad Farai Deed. 78 Americans were also wounded and two U.S. helicopters shot down. Six American servicemen are reportedly missing in action. The brutality of the fighting was punctuated with a gruesome sight of the corpse of an American serviceman being dragged through the streets of Mogadishu as another U.S. chopper pilot was displayed on Somali television, captured and held prisoner by the Adid forces. The heavy toll of American dead, wounded, and captured has deepened public and congressional outrage over the United States' role as part of the United Nations multinational force sent to Somalia on a humanitarian mission 10 months ago to feed the starving millions and restore order. Our forces were attacked over the weekend. Uh, some Americans are missing, and under those circumstances, I think it uh, certainly is not the time for us to depart. Faced with a foreign policy dilemma, the Clinton administration is sending 650 more troops and tanks to Somalia to reinforce the already 4,700 American soldiers already there, along with more than 20,000 troops from 20 other nations. But a Columbia University military expert warns it won't be enough to win an urban guerrilla war against the forces of Muhammad Faradid. We should either commit a much larger force and attempt to uh, act more decisively uh, or get out. Tonight, the United Nations Secretary General Boutrous Boutrous Gallin has said that he is going to Somalia sometime next month to reassess the situation, a situation that has turned into what looks like an urban guerrilla war with no end in sight. Reporting live from the United Nations, I'm John Johnson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, John, very much. The violence in Moscow is also striking too close to home, too close to home for a family in West Orange, New Jersey. Their daughter has been working as a paralegal in Moscow, and during the fighting that left the Parliament building a smoldering wreck over the weekend, their daughter was shot in the back, and she is now only just clinging to life. The story now, more of it from Bertha Coombs. When the political conflict in Moscow turned violent this weekend, Julie Brooks phoned home to West Orange to assure her family she was all right. I think she called her dad, my brother, uh, Sunday night and to tell him that she was fine. But that was Sunday night. And then what happened from that point on, we don't know. A student of Russian language and history, the 23-year-old Cornell graduate moved to Moscow to work as a paralegal this year. Monday morning, another call came from the Russian capital, this time a friend, with news that Julie had been caught in sniper fire outside her apartment building near the Russian White House was hospitalized in critical condition. We don't know the details. We're not here. Her mother's in Russia. Her mother was uh, got to Russia, I guess, this morning or yesterday. And uh, she's with her. And uh, hopefully she's getting the best care she can get. For now, the family is hoping and praying that Julie will recover so they can bring her home. In West Orange, I'm Bertha Coombs, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Politics in New Jersey now. Christine Todd Whitman is getting support, political support, for her plan to cut taxes in New Jersey by 30% over three years if she is elected governor. Today, four New Jersey congressmen agreed that lower taxes would stimulate the New Jersey economy and that Whitman is the person to make it happen. Whitman says she has to convince the voters. I want to believe. The biggest problem that I have to fight in this is a history of cynicism because the voters have been lied to for so long and so many different times, and I expect them to have a skepticism. The group says Governor Florio has wrecked the state's economy with new taxes over his three and a half years in office. New Jersey's economy is not the only thing Christy Whitman and Jim Florio are arguing about these days. They're pointing fingers at each other also over the issues of gun control and the NRA's role in the campaign, the National Rifle Association. But New Jersey voters are looking closer to home and the fears lurking in their neighborhoods. Tonight we turn our New Jersey spotlight on crime. The fear and anger. Father Robert Murata lives in the ironbound section of Newark, the stolen car capital of the country. Personally, I've, I've had my car stolen three times. His church school was broken into last month. I have a stick I carry. And a handful of his elderly parishioners have been mugged on their way to church. It's terrible. It's a terrible way to live. The younger folks, they get married and they move. We know it's just a matter of a year or so before they move out because they don't want to leave. They bring their kids up in, in the neighborhood. 
Crime has overtaken the police in Father Murata's parish. One out of every seven Newark residents is a victim of crime. One in 28 are at the painful end of violent crime. The statewide average is one in 107. From murder and rape to robbery and muggings, crime worries are not limited to the city. One out of every 22 people across the Garden State fell victim to property crime last year. In many towns and communities, crime is the basic element chipping away at the quality of life. From absolute care to utmost fear, for many people in New Jersey, crime and the fear of crime are constant companions. It does not necessarily make you nervous. No, it does not. You just have to be very careful. Even Elena Calello, who's lived in Ironbound for 42 years and was mugged in broad daylight on her way to Father Murata's church, will not let crime get in the way of life. I am a little nervous, you know, but I don't want to stay inside. I've got to get out. Tomorrow we turn our spotlight on jobs and unemployment in New Jersey. Governor Florio and Christine Todd Whitman will be asked to debate these crucial issues on Thursday night. They will debate live at 7 o'clock Thursday right here on Channel 7. We, of course, hope you join us for that. When we come back, a wild goose chase in New Jersey, but if it pays off, it could save the life of a goose that's the victim of the carelessness of man. And sounding the alarm, these sirens alert volunteers when there's a fire, but it's leaving some people sounding off. Those stories when we come back. A touch of gold on soft kid suede, only $39.99 at Shoe Town. That Shoe Town? That Shoe Town. Studded accents on suede, only $39.99 at Shoe Town. Really? That Shoe Town? That Shoe Town. Sleek, flexible, new buck pumps, only $34.99 at Shoe Town. That Shoe Town. That Shoe Town. An updated classic in kid suede, only $34.99 at Shoe Town. That Shoe Town? That Shoe Town. It's the anniversary of our most popular platter. Sounds good. Throw in a steak. Mm, knocks me off my feet. So we're knocking it down to a special price. Sounds good. We're celebrating the anniversary of our steak and all-you-can-eat shrimp platter by knocking down the price to what it was years ago. So come on down. And remember, kids eat for just 99 cents. Sizzler, sizzler, that sounds good. Dear Midas, as a woman, I often feel mechanics don't bother to talk to me. You wouldn't understand. But at Midas, I was treated with courtesy. I'm Brett Foster. How can I help you? And when I explained that I needed my car but did not have a lot of money, your inspection report was explained to me. This shows you the repair options you can choose from. Thanks for treating me as a person capable of understanding my car. Jane Robinson. I guess every town has to have a fire alarm, but in Oakland, New Jersey, about 30 families live so close to the town's fire siren that life on some nights is almost sleepless. They're sounding off because they want the noises off. They want the town fathers of Oakland to find a better way to call the volunteer firemen to duty. Lucy Yang volunteered for this story. We've all heard fire sirens alert volunteers to a disaster, but for residents in this new development in Oakland, New Jersey, these sirens are nothing but a headache. Homeowners here complain this bell is far too loud and rings far too often. The siren is set to the level of our bedroom window, so the tra sound travels directly into, you know, your sleeping quarters. It bothers my ears. We would really just like them to stop ringing it at least at night um, and put Oakland in the 20th century with beepers. Now, Oakland firefighters do wear pagers, but because this area is so hilly, they're not always reliable, which is why this department uses both pagers and the siren for emergency calls. Several years ago, they tried to silence the siren and rely solely on pagers, but response times got worse, so they went back to the bell. Well, the bottom line is, is uh, really safety for the borough residents. Allow our volunteer fire de firemen to get to the fire on time. This pocket seems to get the worst of the noise. Residents elsewhere say while they have sympathy for the folks here, firefighters have to hear the call. If our house was on fire, I'd want everybody to know and I'd want people to get there as soon as possible. A committee has now been set up to study other alternatives. In Oakland, New Jersey, Lucy Yang, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Another story from New Jersey, not about a siren this time, but a, about the honk of a goose on the loose, wounded by an arrow. The arrow was lodged in the hind quarters of the bird. Animal officers used breadcrumbs to try to lure the goose into nets to take the arrow out. But so far, the bird and whoever shot him have eluded them. 
This gets shot in his butt with this arrow and walk around this town with an arrow hanging from him, see how he feels for a while. That's how angry I am. Officials say the area the arrow rather is similar to one taken from another goose two weeks ago, and they're offering a three thousand dollar reward for information leading to the arrest of the shooter of the goose. When we come back, Lassie comes home and Steve Hartman goes to the dogs in life around here. And Scott Clark is at Madison Square Garden for the first face-off of the hockey season. Hey, Bill, hockey season begins anew and the Rangers could use a fresh start. We'll talk live with Mike Keenan, new head coach of the Rangers, when Ivanish News returns. Coming up on World News Tonight, you're not the only one furious about how the government spends some of your money. A former senator whose career has been devoted to spotlighting government waste tonight, Senator Proxmire and the Golden Fleece. Can you tell which one's the cute one? Tonight at 11, Full House Twins Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen have the answer. And Eyewitness News takes you to Planet Hollywood for the scoop. A doubly delightful star turn tonight at 11, right here on Channel 7. It was a fishing trip that began 35 years ago. Back then, he couldn't really imagine retiring. And yet, he began building long-term with Kemper Mutual Funds. Investing with Kemper is an opportunity to have something worth passing down to the next generation. Let's give him a chance to grow. Okay, Grandpa. We're building tomorrow's today. Kemper Mutual Funds. Ask your financial advisor or call this number. Night and day, you are the one. The home of American Popular Standards, 1560 AM, WQEW. Jim Florio, Christy Whitman, the New Jersey gubernatorial debate. Eyewitness News anchor Bill Butel leads a panel of journalists to confront the candidates on the issues important to New Jersey's future. Before you cast your vote, watch the New Jersey gubernatorial debate, sponsored by the League of Women Voters, Thursday at 7, right here on Channel 7. I'm a wheel watcher. Tonight at 7.30. Right here on Channel 7. Oh, what a tangled web she weaves to catch him up in murder and deceit. Morgan Fairchild paves a rocky street of dreams. The late movie after Nightline. Everybody knows about a cat's nine lives, but tonight we have the story of a dog who's had that many lives at least. The Hollywood dog we call Lassie. You know, a beautiful collie, the movie that made everyone cry. Lassie, come home. Well, there's a new Lassie who'd come home tonight. Steve Hartman thought you'd like to meet him because he is, of course, a part of life around here. And you thought your pet was pampered? When Lassie comes home, Lassie comes home in style. Still, it's now been 350 years since the first movie came out. That's 50 years to you and me. Today, the great, 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 great grandson of Lassie does the fetching wow. and drooling. Bob Weatherwax is the second generation trainer. My father said Lassie's like an institution. He says, as long as uh, people continue to have children, which we think they're going to do that for a while, he says, I'm going to have a Lassie out there, you know. And they're in town this week promoting Lassie's 50th birthday book. They've been giving out autographs and creating Insta smiles on every little face they come across. Author Ace Collins has also been letting the dog out of the bag on some behind the scenes secrets. Like, did you know actors were hired based on how well they got along with Lassie? Well, Jed Allen wanted to make sure he got the part that day, so he spent, he spent the morning uh, actually out romping with four collies in heat <laughs> at a kennel and came in, and, and Lassie just loved him. <laughs> Rudd Weatherwax looked over at the producer, Jack Rather, and said, I have never seen Lassie go for anybody like this in his entire life. All right, go on. Go on, that boy. Go on. Go on. Hey, that a boy. Right now, the new Lassie is working on another movie. Take a bow. We Think got to watch Lassie it. rehearse some of his lines. Come on, speak! Speak! I think we're all familiar with this one. Speak! Oh, that a boy, speak! Timmy's in trouble. Speak. If you're watching the TV series, you actually get to the feeling that, gosh, I understood what that bark meant. I think Timmy's in trouble. We buy into full time that Lassie's communicating with all of us. You okay, Timmy? <laughs> Lassie number eight can also tell you when Timmy's up a tree, injured in a crawl space, or buried alive. Maybe not amazing feats, but enough to still turn heads. May the happy endings never end. Steve Hart, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. 
how can happy endings ever ever end with that? Well, we still have the World Series to go through. We've got to get through the uh, Super Bowl, but Scott Clark is about as a square garden for the start of the hockey season. Scotty, come home. Yes, I will. Hey, we're looking for happy beginnings here, right? The season to skate once again. You know, the National Hockey League opening up, and times are changing. We've got new divisions. We've got new teams. We've got new conferences. And the New York Rangers have a new season, and they have needed it. The same old refrain has been around here. When's that Lord Stanley Cup coming back? 53 years and counting. Yes, we must bring up last season before we move on. So many factors figure in, including the injuries. Brian Leach first had the neck and shoulder injuries and then the broken ankle. Tough year. The Rangers' other leader, Mark Messier, was beset not only with a series of nagging injuries, but with coach Roger Nielsen. Messier won out in that standoff, and Roger Nielsen was fired, but under new coach Ron Smith, well, the Rangers just really got worse with uninspired play and terrible goaltending. The result, the Rangers went from first to worst, but that was then. John Van Breesbrook is gone. Mike Richter and Glenn Healy are in and are serving this man, Mike Keenan. This man named past April to change the fortunes of the Rangers, and he joins us live right now. And Mike Keenan, how do you do it? We have to do it with disciplined work and some good fortune, as you mentioned. They had some tough injuries a year ago, and hopefully we can avoid that with a healthy hockey club and reestablish the confidence levels they had two years ago. You talked about discipline, Mike, and you are known as a disciplinarian. Do you think with the talent of this team, and it hasn't changed all that much, that that is basically what this team needs? They need that, and perhaps uh, we, we need an infusion of uh, a couple more players. We're going to see how it unfolds. We've had a tremendously strong preseason with a 7-2 and two record, and we'll develop uh, our, our system over the course of the next uh, 20 games and make some more evaluations. Mike, you're the boss. Many thought Messier was the boss last year. Have you made it clear to him that you're the boss here? I have no problem with Mark Messier. He and I have uh, combined in a, two situations win uh, Canada Cup tournaments, world-class championships. He's a class man. He's won five Stanley Cups. I think I can learn something from Mark. Mike Keenan, best of luck to you this Thank year. Thank you. Mike Keenan, new head coach of the New York Rangers. And as hockey gets underway the baseball playoffs also do as well tonight in Chicago the White Sox up against the defending world champions the Toronto Blue Jays ladies and gentlemen here the big hurt is still hurting though still swinging away the White Sox slugger Frank Thomas Bruce Tricep he may DH the arm is not a problem right now we're not concerned it's just gonna take me a little while to get it loose and get ready to play and you know the Blue Jays are ready they've been here before they've won it before they won it again I think it's an edge. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't think it can be anything but an edge. You know what to expect a little bit. You've been through it before. You know how you reacted to it in the past. And the sports just keep on coming. The NBA training camp just around the corner, and we checked out a street corner today. And right there, up there, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Derek. Riding to the top of the Lincoln Square building is Derek Coleman to, hey, check out the Derek and contemplate his future with the Nets looking to sign a long-term deal. Top of the world, Mom. The ultimatum is if we can get it done before camp start, then fine. But once camp start, I mean, I'm, I'm through with it till the season's over. Does that mean you'd be through with the Nets or you're just through no, with the No, no, just um, as far as contract negotiations. I hope I'm never through with the Nets. I really enjoy being here and being top of the world. <laughs> and there you go. And if you didn't catch Monday Night Football early last night, you missed most of Monday Night Football. But Oh, how exciting the Dolphins were. First two possessions. Dan Marino to Tony Martin. He is off to the races for 80 yards in the score. Miami beat the Redskins 17 to 10, handing the Redskins new head coach Richie Pettibone his third loss in four tries. And yes, there's Richie and Brian Cox is still Brian Cox, the nutty linebacker. But tonight it is the Rangers and the Bruins. We'll have highlights of all the hockey and all the other action tonight at 11 o'clock. For now, Scott Clark reporting live from the Garden. Back to you, Bill. Okay, Scott, thank you very much. And just ahead, two for the price of one, a place where you can get a free dental checkup and the AccuWeather forecast from Sam Champion. Next. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer for The Money Store. Even if your credit is less than perfect, you can still refinance your first mortgage at today's low fixed rates. That's because The Money Store looks at your total credit picture and won't automatically disqualify you for late payments. At The Money Store, you can apply by phone and there's no application fee. So if you want to refinance at today's low rates, even if your credit isn't perfect, call 1-800-LOAN-YES. The Money Store, where America goes for money. I could really use a vacation. That picks me up and takes me to exciting new worlds. <laughs> 
I could really use a vacation. Where I live life instead of just reading about it. Discover the continent of Puerto Rico. Only a continent could offer so many great vacation experiences. Only Puerto Rico puts it all within your reach. Some people hate to stop for gasoline. We do it for a living. Just going from one Sunoco station to another. Checking to make sure a gallon is a gallon. That the octane you pay for is the octane you get. So next time you have to get gasoline, think of us. We have to stop 1,183 times this year. And now, team, here's the play. Get in your cars and run straight to a Sunoco station. Fill up with Super or Ultra 94 and get a college logo glass free. Dual airbags. Uh, check. Available anti-lock brakes. Check. Crumple zone. Check. Rigid steel passenger cage. Ooh, check. The all-new 94 Mitsubishi Galant will pass your safety check with flying colors. And starting at $14,020, it will pass the checkbook test. Ah, check. Special leases on the all-new Galant S start at just $199 a month with only $1,000 down. Sam Chaffin is live at the uh, Kaiser Dental Center at the NYU Dental School. Painless dentistry, and we hope a painless weather forecast. Sam, good evening. I got both of them, Bill, and just like you said, usually we give the weather for free. Now we're giving free dental care. The screening, the clinic is open all this week. You know, we do this uh, every year about this time. This is the NYU Kaiser Dental Center is where we are. This is the way it works. Appointments? Who needs them? You don't need one. Just come on in, walk in, and see us. We're here all week long. Now, they'll take a look at your teeth, and they'll tell you if you have a problem, or they'll also examine you for oral cancer. If you have a problem, you can get it taken care of here, or go to your your own dentist and uh, if there's an emergency they'll take care of it right away free dental screening clinic 345 East 24th Street through Friday and that's 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. now as far as the uh, the numbers go outside it's been a beautiful afternoon absolutely stunning afternoon no problems whatsoever and as far as the numbers have been given us well uh, can we go ahead give me a little room on the left hand side here so we can get those numbers in here and there we go Okay, 56 degrees is where we are right now. It's show business. Uh, as far as the relative humidity goes, still a very dry day. No moisture problems and none expected, really. Uh, this high pressure should last us till the end of the week, and we only see one cold front working in for the weekend that might give us a few clouds at that point. As far as the winds go, have not been a problem today because as the center as that high gets closer to us, that things will actually be fairly calm, and that high will pass directly over the top of us tomorrow, keeping us out of the way of the cold air, really. The coolest pocket of air we've seen today will be a little cool tonight as well. Here it is, area of high pressure right along those clouds you see in northern New England. The high slides in right behind them, pushes those clouds out of the way. So expect clear skies tonight, clear skies tomorrow, allowing plenty of sunshine in. Maybe a little chilly early in the morning, but the temperatures will warm up with all that sunshine and we'll get into the 60s again, very near 70 degrees. And as that high works off the coastline, we get a southwestern return of air, and I think we'll be able to pull up some numbers that'll actually get us into the 70s, well into the 70s, and even some 80s inland areas. Now, a sea breeze develops, which will keep the coastline and the city a little bit cooler. But for tomorrow, great skies. High pressure pressure right over the top of us, 68 degrees in town, 64 as you start to work up toward Boston, 43 degrees though, there's that cool pocket of air sitting right over northern Maine. As far as the rest of the picture goes, well, you can expect low temperatures to be about 44 degrees tonight, not as bad as last night, but still pretty chilly out there, clear and chilly. If there's a problem with frost, it appears that it's going to be north and west, far north and west, northern Jersey and moving up the Hudson River Valley. Weather says tomorrow, 68 degrees, early chill will lead to sunny skies and a nice, warm, comfortable afternoon, just about right on normal, but 76, 78, 76. 666, the numbers for the rest of the week. We'll be here at the Chrysler Dental Center all week. Uh, Bill, we'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, Sam, thank you very much. We are working on a developing story for Eyewitness News at 11, a very sad story. The Army is sending two teams to notify two families in New Jersey that they have lost a soldier in Somalia. And more troops are preparing for duty, shipping out tonight from Dover Air Force Base. Should the administration bring our soldiers home from Somalia? What do we lose if the United States ends its mission there now? We'll have some answers to those questions and the latest from Mogadishu. And he told people to invest with him and their nest eggs would grow. But now the man named Jay Deutschman has disappeared and $5 million in dreams may have gone with him. We'll have the latest on this money mystery tonight at 11 o'clock. Finally, it was October 5th, 1921, 72 years ago today. World Series time, the New York Yankees and the New York Giants. For the first time, the series were broadcast on the radio, and Grantland Rice was the sportscaster. It was Grantland Rice who wrote, When the one great scorer comes to mark against your name, he marks not that you won or lost, but how you played the game. Looking at what's going on in Russia and the tough way Boris Yeltsin is playing that game, it struck me that Yeltsin would prefer Newt Rockney to Grantland Rice. Newt and cost 280,000 people their jobs. Now Florio refuses to rule out raising taxes again. Jim Florio. 
he may be the worst governor 